going to be reviewing these two dogs going to be uh, reviewing the unboxing and explanation why I purchased Pioneer Duckless Mini Split Inverter Heat Pump Air Conditioner because ultra efficient 22 sear performance which is the best at the 115 volt range area and as far as uh, 9,000 BTU they don't nobody makes one smaller than this without paying some ridiculous like five thousand dollars and it's not even going to be this good and efficient and can cool up to in 131 degree weather and can heat down to minus 13 Fahrenheit so it's ultra low ambient most of the newer mini splits can have the heat pump uh, heating in extremely low temperatures. Energy Star doesn't really mean anything. That's a joke. You have to look at the sear rating on these. And it's also low noise. So this goes on a Ford Transit camper van as opposed to traditionally putting a rooftop air conditioner that takes up space that I could be using for solar panels. And it makes it a bit top heavy and the rooftop air conditioners are extremely inefficient and noisy they require a generator or shore power plug-in you try to run them on solar you better have something like 3000 amp hours of battery fully charged this is a rather expensive model running around one thousand dollars but i bought it from home depot who gives me a 10 percent military discount free shipping to the store to pick up and a one year return period if I use since I use the Home Depot credit card the Diamantre Ultra is the model Pioneer Home Depot sells many 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 uh, models of Pioneer um, heat pump mini split air conditioners and I chose this one after spending, I think, several days researching. It will be mounted on the left rear door of this Ford Transit T250 high roof camper van conversion. Um, I have a mounting bracket that I put on here first. Uh, I will be the first one to do that as far as I can tell based on research to mount the compressor directly to the door rather than to some bar that comes out of the trailer hitch receiver down there that would have to be swung out in order to open this door. I plan on putting some reinforcement steel plate on the inside with stainless steel bolts to hold the mounting plate here. In a separate video, I will be showing the install I have on order flexible line sets that will come out of the mini split compressor and go under the van and I will have to cut probably a pretty good one inch or larger hole into the floor of the van and have that line set come up through here to the air handler that will be mounted above the bed there. power consumption of the mini split is approximately six to seven hundred watts at full throttle at uh, full speed full uh, whatever you want to call it full power so that's extremely low compared to what a rooftop air conditioner would pull which is going to be a pretty good what would that be about three thousand watts or something so here I have uh, some reinforcement plates that go on the inside of the door that will be cut and then some rubber bushings that go on the bottom of the compressor and go to the mounting plate here. It's a very heavy duty mounting plate that can handle the compressor much bigger than the one I'm going to be putting on. I have other optional rubber absorption 
pads to cut out the vibration from the compressor if there is any. Upon opening the air handler box, the first thing I see is the mounting template. I'm surprised to see this label on here that it's rated at poor heating efficiency and only average cooling efficiency, but that's a bit misleading because to get the 30.5 you have to go with 240 volts. The air handler box has 16 gauge wiring, which I'm surprised I thought it would be something like 10 or 12 gauge. I guess since it's 115 uh, AC, that's okay. Then it has these rubber shock absorbers, I'm surprised to see there. And some miscellaneous hardware. This is not part of it, that's a BMB return. And the air handler itself is pretty lightweight. And it has the um, line set entry on this side, on the on the right side of it. When opening the box, I accidentally used my expensive Victorinox scissor blade to run across, not paying attention, realizing later there's a metal staple that can hurt the blade. I was surprised to see this, that it's been inspected twice. I've never seen that before. The line set is surprisingly very, very lightweight. I think they used to use heavier gauge copper in the past when copper was cheaper, but now that copper is expensive, they're cutting uh, the weight down quite a bit. Seems to have a really nice weather resistant, um, attractive insulation around it. I may or may not use any of this line set because I'm I have on order flexible line set I have not received yet. Also in the condenser box has drain hose to drain the condensation water out so I have to cut another hole in the vehicle floor for that to be drained out. And this uh, I think it's clay I forgot what that's used for. Something to do with the drain. And then here, I think, so this looks like a couple inches. So that's the size hole I'm supposed to be drilling uh, through the floor of the vehicle. That's very large. I don't know what this uh, vinyl type tape is for, but it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't have sticky on either side. So wraps around something, I'll find out. This is kind of beefy to be mounting on the back of a camper van door, but I've done similar things before successfully. I'll figure it out, most likely. If I can't do it, I will have to resort to uh, mounting it on the trailer hitch receiver. That's okay. I'll find a way to do that and still be able to tow a trailer with, without having to remove it. So here it is, pretty good looking. Um, I was told that heat reflection from the sun is important, so I don't know why they didn't make it pure white, but instead it's a cream color, perhaps because if it's pure white, the mold and mildew shows easier and dirt and all that. So particularly on the back of the vehicle, pure white, would be pretty hard to keep clean. Could be challenging from, uh, to keep these fins from being damaged by things that touch up against it. And also a pressure washer spray. Have to be very careful not to use that or it'll damage it. So um, this is something I've never seen before. I've been trying to find in other people's videos and pictures what in the world does the back side of it look like? And nobody else um, would let me see. Even the manufacturer's website doesn't let you see the back that, um, that I could tell. Uh, what's this? Oh, I think that's a temperature sensor there. And the uh, electrical and line sets come in on that side. 
which is the undesirable side on the because on the if this is mounted on the left camper van door I would want all of those to be on the other side not this side but that's okay I'll just have to run it underneath it or behind it here's the condenser model number Here they're warning me to read, read, read. So good thing it's not really very um, deep or wide. I'm actually a little bit ignorant uh, because I have no experience with... Um, <laughs> oh, people are going to be cutting that clip when I run for president telling saying I'm ignorant okay so uh, I'm actually a little bit ignorant regarding <laughs> I should have said regarding really quick after ignorant uh, regarding these mini splits because I don't even know what direction the airflow is I assume uh, let's see does it pull air from the front and goes out the back or pulls from the back and goes out the front I don't even know the basics so uh, if I can do this then maybe you can too but check out some future videos to see if I actually succeed with this or not you two love each other I spoke with one of the pioneer engineers over the phone recently about mounting this on the back door of a camper van and or no it was I was yeah I don't know who it was anyway some engineer uh, and he recommended to keep this shaded from the Sun as much as possible so in the future I may build a visor that goes over the back which should be fine I don't drive backwards at a high enough speed to cause uh, uplift of that wind resistance the first thing I have to do is pay very heavy attention on the distance between the bottom feet so I can figure out how it's going to be mounted on those brackets. That's my first priority before I even do anything else is to get this mounted, see if I can even mount it on the back door or not. So uh, these two feet are the things I'm interested in right now. <laughs> Also, during product pickup and delivery to your home, always keep it upright because of the refrigerant that's in there, I believe is the reason, um, to keep it uh, whatever oriented correctly. It has to be straight up and down. Never lie this thing on its back or uh, not, unless just for a few seconds, maybe. Okay, it's weighing in at 42 pounds, so that's not bad. Wait. There's still some, oops, let me try again. Okay, you can barely see it. 53 pounds, 53.2 pounds when it's um, completely on the scale. So um, I think the back door can handle that plus the weight of the brackets, no problem. Most other people say, no, it can't, but I'm gonna make it happen. Okay, so please share your thoughts in the comment section below on any uh, anything you think I missed, any questions you have. Oh, I almost forgot. Okay, so here's the uh, line set I ordered. It They only had two in stock. I ordered one of two. Somebody else bought the other one or they pulled it. Um, these are extremely, extremely, extremely rare. Very, you can see them all over the internet, but none are for sale anymore. This was pretty much the last one you could buy on the internet worldwide. They're sold out. I think it has something to do with cannabis um, greenhouses that flexible lines are highly sought after for greenhouses uh, to grow marijuana. Uh, oops, that's a key word uh, YouTube is going to hate, but F them. Um, they don't promote me anyway. Uh, I sure don't get paid anything. Um, so 
This is actually the wrong size. Um, the Pioneer is one quarter by three eighths. Uh, but since one half is a slightly larger larger internal diameter than three eighths, that'll still work. And I was speaking with the Pioneer engineer who said that uh, there could be a slight loss of efficiency by not using the right size hose. So I also ordered um, the kind that you can solder just in case I can't get this to work. So these are from K Tool. And those are actually very low prices. These are flexible lines. I think they probably still have these in stock. Um, so that's the only other place I know in the whole world you can currently get them. But these you have to solder on. Now these are the right sizes. And so I'll have to hire an expert to braze those on. B-R-A-Z-E. An HVAC technician would need to braze them into the line. You can't practically do it yourself. It's extremely difficult. Um, yeah, you could do it yourself with enough research and buying enough equipment, but I don't recommend it because without the experience, you end up getting little pieces of metal in a line and that's going to really screw everything up. So at this point, I don't know which lines I'm going to use, but I have to use uh, either one of these or maybe a combination or else I won't be able to open and close that rear door because this copper line that it comes with is not flexible. It's bendable, but it's not flexible. There is a difference. Bendable means, uh, in my opinion, you can bend it to get it in a certain shape intended to be bent once and left alone. Flexible means it can flex back and forth as the door opens and closes. That's it. So, uh, again, comments, very welcome.